Bina Malik Hussain and you're watching The Coffee Table. If you went to an English medium school in Lahore, chances are that there was a debating society in your school and chances are that the cool kids were in that society. And it's very likely that you might have been one of those cool kids. <laughs> Unless you were, of course, in the dramatic society, like me. <laughs> Joining us today on set are two very accomplished debaters from Lahore. One of them is a real legend and when we pan the camera to her, you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> We've got with us today Aisha Amir Ahmed, who is right now the current president of the Debating Society of Pakistan. And we've got Ali Akram with us, who used to be on the Nationals team in 2012. So welcome to the set, guys. It's really great to have you on the show. It's nice to, nice be, to here. be here. Yay! Huzzah! This house welcomes you to the set. <laughs> <laughs> this house is prepared to speak on debate. But how will we have a debate on that motion? <laughs> well, we can't. See, again, dramatic society here. <laughs> so, Ali, uh, you were on the national team in 2012. In 2012. Yes. 2012. So that was the year we went to South Africa. But tell me about the national team. What is the national team for the, for the dramatic suite? National team, debating was one of the few activities that had a national team in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. That was one of the draws for me for that activity. Mm -hmm. Um, we debated, there was a there's a circuit in Lahore, and now there's a circuit all over Pakistan. But right. back so the then, national team is like the international Pakistan debate team, like yeah. the cricket team, or well, the hockey But more team. consistent than the cricket team. Uh, <laughs> Our performance certainly is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the president of the society. <laughs> okay, so um, Aisha, since obviously you have a long history of debating yes. in Pakistan and outside of Pakistan. No, actually, no. I was so um, satiated <laughs> with debate by the time <laughs> I cool. left for college in the U.S. Right. that I did not debate in college. Right. But also, part of it was that I felt like school and college debate here, because I was a debater for Kinnaird primarily. Okay. Um, so that's where you began your debate career? Yeah, before for that, that um, people told me I should debate, and mm -hmm. because it was what my big sister was doing, I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, of course. Um, and then my mother was just like, you know, maybe you should just try out. And the rest yeah. is history, basically. Yeah. So, but I always felt like debate was training for real life. Mm -hmm. And so once you've been on the national team a couple of times and you won a fair number of awards, mm. it seems like it's time to move on and like use those skills yeah. for real. And where I went to college, I felt like we were debating in an informal setting enough. Mm -hmm. Like in class, in class. In class and casual mm. conversation in mm. dorm rooms. And I mean, so it was that kind of educated discourse right. was just a part of the atmosphere. Uh -huh. And so I didn't feel a need to have competitive debate in my life mm -hmm. at that point. So I think I find it really interesting that debate in schools have uh, been around for a really long time now. And um, how far back does the national team go, for example? 1991 was the first okay. national team. Um, and this is, when we say the national team, we're talking about the team that goes to the World Schools Debating Championships, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, which started in 1988. And Pakistan is one of the teams that has been there for a very long time. I mean, the first tournament was in 88, and we've been debating there since 1991. We've only missed that's, two. That, that's phenomenal. And one of them was in Israel, so well, we, we couldn't we go. We couldn't have gone there huh. in any, in so, any way. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've, we've made it to the finals mm. several times. We've made it to the semifinals more times. Uh, and, an, and then from, from what I also remember of it, it's an incredibly uh, seasoned, so, sort of very focused, and there's a, lot of, um, there's a lot of incredible hard work and years of it that goes into training a team for debates. Like our, our debating scene is sort of pretty well developed by now. I think, I think that's very true in Lahore yeah. in particular. Mm -hmm. I think if you go to other cities, yeah. it's interesting to see how, for example, in Karachi, um, Model United Nations has been more popular. Yes, um, that, that, was, that wasn't a thing when I was in school. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I think a lot of debaters still treat Model United Nations as a kind of a step. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Step did, really. did you do that? Were you in, were you in the MUN? No, in I was school? no. I was terrible at Model UNs, which is why I looked at them with condescension. To have, um, <laughs> so what, did, so what did you have to do, to do in the MUN that a debater wouldn't necessarily need to do? Oh, you have to be nice to people. Um, <laughs> 
Okay. Yeah. You have to come to an agreement. You have to come to an agreement. Um, you couldn't crush each other. <laughs> and you won the award for, for coming to an agreement, for yeah. being the nicest person in the room, the most friendly, <laughs> the most diplomatic, and the person who got stuff done. Um, and then so it's easy to see why nice. debaters and munners are kind of a different group. <laughs> <laughs> Even though a lot of the so, skills are overlapping. Yeah. Yes, yeah. You can yes, exactly. Yeah. And then that sort of brings us to the idea of why debates is important. Because as an extracurricular, it's so present in school. And ev almost everybody in most schools gets an opportunity to do it. So Ali, as somebody who's um, debated here in Lahore from your own school, but then you also debated in college. So yes. you sort of carried on. Uh, debating, your debating career, as it were. How do you feel that it was uh, useful to you? Or was it, how important was it in, in sort of, in terms of growth and in terms of skills that you used in, you know, other aspects I think of your academic my life? relationship with debate and what I got out of it evolved over time. Mm -hmm. uh, in Pakistan, and it had two big chapters, my debating in Pakistan yeah. and my debating on the college circuit mm -hmm. in the U.S. In Pakistan, it was more about expanding my horizons. Mm -hmm. I came from a, from a background where uh, all my, my sisters, they were all very good at academics. And okay. my mom was tiger mom, and she wanted uh -huh. us all to succeed. And she so was weren't very... they, they weren't debaters? They were not, and they not didn't like have the... Not your sister? They, <laughs> they would have been had they had the opportunity. Uh -huh. But um, so it was... And so for my mom, there was always this trade-off between time spent studying and time spent debating. Quite and right. Sort of like, you know, what is this? You know, sort of you're going off and are you wasting time? Yeah, and because it would require hours uh, almost every mm -hmm. school day and then yes. tournaments would last all weekend. And mm -hmm. then when do you revise your physics? Or when yeah. do you look over <laughs> your math notes? Um, so for me initially, it was just about learning a lot of the things that mm -hmm. we are not taught in our curriculums. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of philosophy, a lot of political philosophy and other types of philosophy, a lot of history. Um, economic concepts that were considered far too advanced for our O level or A level right. curriculum. Yeah. So that was my relationship uh, with debate in Pakistan. It was mm. an opportunity to learn. It was an opportunity to meet people outside your school. Quite um, right. That's also valuable. Definitely, especially since um, schools in Lahore, especially, and I think Karachi is different in that front. They tend to be uh, all single sex education. You get very little interaction outside your school, and it's a bubble. And my school was an academic bubble, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and everybody was judged. Uh, gauged against each other based on just one metric. So this was a nice breather out of school. Um, and then in college, it was completely different. In college, this was something, because when I went to college, um, everybody was a genius at everything. Um, <laughs> I had Olympic. Uh, the liberal arts education of the United States. Uh, absolutely. I, um, people in my dorm room were either 2B Olympians or ex-Olympians. Um, what? People had won all sorts of prizes I didn't even know existed. Yeah. So, right, yeah. So the debate became <laughs> Not my intimidating thing. at all. No. <laughs> yeah, so I went into college thinking, oh, I had enough. I was satiated, like, man, I should And you know, like, in Lahore, in high school, like, there's a certain amount of cachet you have. You're successful at certain know. things. You feel like, yeah, I got it going on. And then you, like, definitely. go to inside the real world, and you're like, right. oh, hello, pawn. They're much bigger than I thought. Yeah. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, so that was my first, so I had an on and off relationship with debate during my four years in college. And towards the beginning, I swore I would never debate again. And right. then next but thing why? I knew, I was at a tournament. Because yeah. I'd had enough. Like, yeah. the burnout is real. It gets really competitive. Uh -huh. And you think of college as a fresh start. Um, yeah. But then at some point, you want to fall back on something you're comfortable with. True. Um, and so tell me if this is true or not. Because I have uh, a few friends who used to debate um, in American college teams. And they say that the quality of debates is, it's very different. Like Pakistani debaters or debaters from sort of this side of the world seem to be much better informed than, than, the, than them. That was a misconception yeah. I had going in, but, and it was also my time. Um, so I graduated mm -hmm. in 2016 and I was in college 2012 onward. Yeah. That was the real time when American colleges really became a force in the world oh, university okay. circuit. Mm -hmm. So the quality that I experienced firsthand, mm -hmm. there was a bit of learning curve for most of my teammates yeah. because they didn't do parliamentary debate in high schools. They had three or four other formats. Okay. But so the learning curve was a little steep. But once yeah. they got onboarded with that learning process, they were as some of the smartest people I ever met, both in a debate and non-debate context. Yeah, the U.S. debate programs are structured very differently. Okay. So you have, I, I think, the more academic form of debate there is policy debate. Okay. And that's very, very rigorously research-based. Okay. People will go in with literally trolley bags of research information into wow. a debate. Yeah. But Almost kind of lawyerly, I well, imagine, sort of. In some ways, but it's also extremely 
technical, it's very jargony. Okay. And in fact, uh, you have to be highly trained to be able to make sense of a speech because mm -hmm. they speak very fast. so fast what? that it's impossible to make sense of what they're saying. And so, I mean, the rhetorical aspect yeah. of it is really lost in policy debate. Uh, American right. policy debate is not about rhetoric at all. It's just about facts. And or argument, information. logic, logic mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. argument backed up with fact, yes. Yeah. But delivered at breakneck speed. But then that sort of takes away from, um, I, I want to say the art of it, yes. perhaps. And you know, there's that whole idea that, that debaters are logical and it's all about facts and logic and sort of winning an argument. But then, like you said, there's also the, the rhetoric of it and, yeah. and the presentation of it and sort of how to present an argument. There's a, there's a certain sort of imagine that a good debater would have a certain flair for that. I think the best debaters, um, certainly in the parlamentary style, mm -hmm. Um, and, do and just, have. And just for sort of our yeah, viewers yeah, who might not be familiar, what, are, what is parliamentary style debating? So in parliamentary style debate, you have um, more than one person on each side. Okay. So you have a team yeah. and they're building a case together in opposition to one or more other teams. Right. Um, and it's based loosely on the idea of British parliamentary debate. Okay. Um, hence parliamentary. Hence parliamentary. <laughs> and then there's there are various variations of it. Um, what's done mostly in Pakistani schools at this point is world schools format. Okay. What's done in the universities is um, either people do British parliamentary or Asian university style. Okay. So, so there's those, lots of different. Mm, yes, but fundamentally, all three of these have a lot in common mm -hmm. in terms of a combination of rhetoric and argument and a highly interactive format mm -hmm. so that in all of them, your opponents are allowed to stand up and ask you a point of information, for yes. example, mm. and you have the right to refuse it. But if you refuse it too many times, you look like a coward and, <laughs> you know. <laughs> There's a challenge. I challenge you, sir. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, and then, and, 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 I mean, you need to be able to respond to that. Yeah, and sort of quick thinking on your feet and somebody sort of flinging something at you and you yes, should be able to yes, sort of, exactly. you know, like, whoosh, exactly. whoosh, light and I think, I think, so parliamentary debaters, success, the most successful ones, yeah. have some rhetorical flair. Right. Now, it can be a highly stylized form, or mm. they can be extremely clinical. I mean, some, some debaters are almost surgical in the way yeah. that they yeah, describe things. Yeah, I think that's a very good adjective. Um, and then, surgical. You, were you a surgical I tried to debater. be. I don't, I don't know if I no, I mean, And, and you, can, you can categorize them. I yeah. mean, you can put debaters in these groups so that you have the ones who have these really, I mean, very clear signposting of, well, in this argument, they said this, but this, 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 and this. Yeah. And, and they break it down very, very clearly. Yeah. Then you have the ones who are much more, so come sit down with me. Let me tell you why yeah. this doesn't work. Yeah. That, that kind of very persuasive, very kind of, yeah. almost politician type um, thing. And then you have the ones who are very humorous, you have people who are as if they're making a speech at the United Nations. Yeah, so yeah. very, sort very of oratorial. Very and, much yeah. so. So, yeah. so, but you need to have that in order to succeed. And I think that's very different from policy debate. And as Ali was mentioning, I think American universities have only relatively recently started focusing on parliamentary, parliamentary debate. Ah, because it's sort of, from what it sounds like, it seems to just be a more fun way to do debates. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> And, I think so. <laughs> uh, the American version of parliamentary yeah. debate, as it's done in the college circuit, has a, has a spin on the kind of uh, debate that we did. So mm -hmm. one of the spins that makes it interesting yeah. is that the government can come in with any case, right. uh, any mm -hmm. motion, and they announce the motion with the first minute of the first speaker's oh, speech. Wow. And so thinking on your feet is taken to another level, oh, wow. um, which yeah. takes some getting used to. Yeah. Um, but on the flip side, you can have the same case and run it throughout the tournament. Mm -hmm. It becomes repetitive. And then you can go tournament to tournament. And by the end, some people have these cases that are ironclad or as close to ironclad yeah. as they can be. Yeah. Uh, so that was a challenge. It was fun, but it was different. It was just different, to say the least, from what we did. Yeah, but it sounds like super exciting. And we're going to take a short break. And we will see you in a second. And don't go anywhere. Hi, welcome back to the coffee table. We're still talking debates. And it's nice to see you again. <laughs> No, I'm not joking. It's true. Thanks for coming back.
So Aisha, you have been part of the debating scene in Lahore for a long time. And you... <laughs> That's putting it mildly. <laughs> well, yes, I'm at the, enough that um, there is uh, an, uh, there's a debater's award in your name for best speaker the, in one of the tournaments. The senior nationals, yes. Mm. I told you she was a legend. I wasn't kidding. <laughs> but and you've been the president of the debating society now for six years and you will be till next year so and you've been a coach and you've trained like scores mm -hmm. of debaters not this one unfortunately you, no, no. Yeah, no, I missed that one <laughs> I think that was the only time ma'am Aisha was not trained yeah, in I was, my yeah, four yeah. years I was out of the country <laughs> just missed it but just, just the window of four years yeah. maybe now you can like you know call her later <laughs> teach me some skills <laughs> so how have you seen the debating scene evolve over time well one of the things when I was debating yeah. um, world school style debate was still a relatively new thing in the world uh -huh. right I mean mm -hmm. because I was on the national team in 92 mm -hmm. and the first worlds were in 88 and so the style was still very much evolving okay. Um, and in Pakistan, I mean, one of my favorite stories is that when the first Pak team went to the world, they didn't know that they were supposed to be speaking as a team. Oh. Uh, and so they went with their individual speeches. Oh, wow. And then we're told, uh, no, that's yeah. not how you do this. You have to work together. <laughs> so... Um, the second time round, we did a lot better. I mean, you know, <laughs> you learned. because we, we, we knew what we were supposed yes. to do. <laughs> and you know, in back, I mean, it wasn't like, you know, you had the internet where you could just look things no. up and be like, oh, this is how it's done. No, no, there That's was like a exciting. three page pamphlet of wow. what the World School's yeah. format is that they had brought back. And for years, that was like the Pakistani the debate Bible. <laughs> it was like three pages. <laughs> I was, I was lucky. Uh, yeah, we had a DSP, the Debating Society Pakistan. It had its own constitution. Everybody had read the 20-page oh, yeah. document it's a with all of, the rules. Yeah, it's a proper organization yeah, now. Yeah. It's like a colossus. That's so exciting, <laughs> though. <laughs> it is very exciting. It's very exciting of... to have seen that grow. Yeah. I mean, when, when we started out, it was just that the English-speaking union mm -hmm. uh, would select the team. They would have oh, an, so a selection nice. tournament. It still exists. The English-speaking union still absolutely. exists. Absolutely. And then as debate grew, mm. it a spin-off organization was formed. Mm -hmm. And so the Debating Society of Pakistan has evolved from that. Yeah. As a and specialized organization to just take care of debates. Right, yeah. right. We do some other public speaking stuff, but almost mm. all yeah. is parliamentary debate. And over the years, it's become that we've done more outreach work. I'm very, very proud. This is one of the things that I'm most proud of as president is that we've had a tournament in Interior Sindh, some That's miles amazing. away That's from Tendu al yeah. There's a trust school. Was um, it in Sindhi or was it in English? It's in English mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the DSP tournaments are almost all in English. Yeah. We and that do, can be quite polarizing, I imagine, for schools that it, aren't very fluent. It can, and, and as a result, we've finally gotten to the point where we also have a nationals in Urdu. Oh, excellent. Um, so for the past yeah. three years, we've yeah. been having a senior nationals in Urdu as well. Excellent. And mm. we're increasing it so that there are tab tournaments in Urdu as well. I'm very, so that and the fact that we've been doing these outreach debates um, where we had kids coming from Jacobabad, mm. from um, Mirpur Khas. No. From, I mean, it was. It was uh, I well, I mean, Faisalabad is now uh, like a mature and established yeah, yeah. presence. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, people so. who traveled by bus for hours to get to the tournament. Wow! It was fantastic, and yeah. and they were just really excited to be there, and um, you know, debate can be a bit of a boy zone. Uh-huh. And yeah, like many things <laughs> in life. <laughs> shocking. Yes. As, as, as a revelation it. to all the viewers, I'm sure. <laughs> like, <Right? gasps> um, but it was really great to see. Um, because we were host this tournament was being hosted by uh, what functions really kind of like a cadet school. Okay. So it's an all boys boarding, mm -hmm. boarding school. Oh, okay, that's so, like intense. Like, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. A really masculine. So, theme. so many of the teams that had been invited, hmm. they came with all boys teams. There right. were some that didn't, yeah. 
But one boy came up to me in the middle of the tournament and he was just like, you know, ma'am, if our girls had been along, we would have done better. Oh, and all of us Lahoris were kind of floored because we could not imagine a Lahori male debater ever acknowledging that. We didn't have females. In our <laughs> you went to an all boys school. No, I, I, I understand that, <laughs> but, but generally, I mean, the number of male debaters who yeah. are willing to give women their due when mm -hmm. they deserve it mm -hmm. is, is small. It's, even now. Even now, and in many ways, you will find that a lot of times women drift away from debate. They don't come back to judge, mm -hmm. they don't come back to coach, because the circuit does not treat them with sufficient respect. I mean, you know, I'm a tall woman, I have a low voice, um, so that's something that has given me a certain edge, where mm -hmm. people take me seriously. Right. <clears throat> women who are shorter, women who have higher pitched voices, mm -hmm. women who present in a more traditionally, conventionally feminine way, yeah, yeah. women who just happen to like pink, you know? I mean, that's it's not a so, crime. <laughs> no, but apparently it means you don't have a brain. Uh, so, and so much of debating is about proving you're smart. Right, so, so, so even a lot of really smart women mm -hmm. are not taken seriously yeah. just because they don't present in what is seen as how smart people look and how smart people talk. Uh, so that's a real problem. Uh, we're working on it, mm -hmm. uh, but it can be a very toxic situation. I where, can imagine, and it uh, must be really difficult to try and correct it if experienced female debaters are, don't feel comfortable coming back into, you well, know, right. the scene, I mean, you know, I, coming back onto look, the scene. It, it, like, think, think about this, no, but the, I, I, mm -hmm. I have two kids. Yeah. Um, one of whom is the official debating society baby yeah. because he was born <laughs> during my presidency. Yeah. But um, people are very, they don't understand the difficulties that women face in simply managing the logistics of being present for a debate tournament. Oh, oh yes, uh, yes. So if people aren't willing to do things mm -hmm. on time, then the majority of women can't show up because they have other commitments where people are less understanding yeah. of getting, I'm going to be several hours later than I said I would. That, yeah. That's not really an option for most women. Quite, quite right. And so, so it's not simply about toxicity. There's, no. There are also structural societal problems, yes, right? I can and imagine. then if you're fighting against those to be there, yeah. and then people turn around and say, oh, she just gets attention because she's pretty, then, that really, you know, you, everyone has better things to do with their time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> in a nutshell, yes, absolutely. So, um, Ali, when uh, when you went to the nationals, how many women were there on the national team for Pakistan? So my year, we were, I think there were two two women and three men. Okay. Two young so, men, young women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that, that, and so, yeah, very... I, this is one of those things where this is something that I became more aware of mm -hmm. after I quit the Lahori or Pakistani debate circuit. Ah, so, so you, once you had a little distance from it. A little it, distance. Yeah. And I saw how uh, how the representation differed yeah. in, in the US, for instance. Mm -hmm. Because for me, I came, like I said, I came from an all-boys school and debate circuit was a much more progressive platform. Mm -hmm. uh, it, mm -hmm. And the ways that you mentioned are obvious ways in which could could be better. But for me, it was just sure. in comparison to what I saw in school, for instance, when we had a and female yeah, teacher. Yeah. And just having um, like an yeah. option to interact with women sure. and just do a debate, which is a fairly healthy activity, Absolutely. generally. To for the do. most part, yes. And yeah. uh, even some of the more toxic uh, elements that I might myself have been part of mm -hmm. were all clumped in together with being right. a tough, aggressive, competitive debate team. Sure. And we all yeah. thought of these things as more or less just tactics or strategies against different yeah. teams, pointing yeah. out different weaknesses. And then in hindsight, a lot of it did have a, a gender tinge to it or more than a tinge to it. Well, I'm, I'm quite sure there was because like you said, and I think that's a pretty uh, in, in, important point, is that a lot of success when you think of a successful debater, even as a debater, when you think of strategy, you want to win and there's a certain aggression yeah. behind it. And there's all, obviously, well, you, you have to want to win. Everybody wants to win. But do you think that um, sometimes um, it can be a little more aggressive than, than necessary? Like, 
sometimes it's, it's also like putting up a good argument, isn't it? Or should it? So I, I on the one hand, I really en enjoyed and I vouched for the yeah. idea of having bite and aggression yeah. mm -hmm. and some sort of ambition. And if winning is something that drives you uh, to read up more, to research more, yes. to, um, that's awesome. Yeah. And I'm all for it. But to the point where I think even I became, when I was my senior year of, uh, in high school, going that's into a crucial world. year, you know? That's Absolutely. like when the big tournaments are happening, happening. And that's when winning is like super important. Yeah, right. So my circuit year going yeah. into the yeah. park team selection camp was, mm -hmm. was when I thought was my biggest chance of getting in. Yeah. It was coming to the point where I would read something interesting on either The Economist or something. Yeah. Um, and then the first reaction would be, how can I use this in a debate? Yeah. Um, which was, was it okay to begin with? Because yeah. it, it's what got me to read The Economist. But <laughs> and, you I, know, make notes. <laughs> exactly. But like they a all, responsible research person. <laughs> yes, exactly. But then they became very one-dimensional. Um, and then that's a feeling, when a lot of people say when they become jaded with the activity, I think that's what they refer to. That it, You start viewing things in terms of arguments you can make for or against potential topics. You just kind of, you just always switched on. Exactly, exactly. So while that makes you quick on your feet, yeah. um, it also makes you lose touch with why you started debating in the first place. I think there is a balance to be struck there. And yeah. Yeah. one of my coaches was incredible at striking that balance. Mm -hmm. And if anything, he erred on the side of non-competitiveness. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and some, someone that in, at that time you were a little or, frustrated Or let's say with. not uh, not competitive, but let's say not, less aggressive. Let's make Absolutely, it. yeah. Not mm. as cutthroat. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And no, and I mean, debate can be cutthroat. It's something that yeah. we work really hard to work against yeah. because there is a healthy level of competition. And then at some point, it just becomes really something actively bad for kids. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's something that we have to remember it's fundamentally meant to be an educational activity. Yes. <laughs> right? It's not, not a gladiator. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, I mean, kill or be killed. Yeah, the point is to have people who are able to think critically and communicate what they've yes. learned in persuasive ways, right? Rather than to fight with each other, because that's, that's really not yeah. the point, yeah. finally. And I think one of the things that debaters sometimes struggle to learn and is something that more coaches need to focus more on uh -huh. is teaching kids the difference between defeating an argument mm -hmm. and defeating an opponent. Ah, oh, um, yes. I think that's a really crucial distinction. Right. And so, mm -hmm. yes, you can make fun of your opponent's arguments and sometimes that's really effective. And, yeah, and if and you say something that's like I mean, that you know it's not true, it doesn't hold water and you're just like, <laughs> yeah, that's not true. It's an effective rhetorical and yeah. analytical tool sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. And to remember that the people you're persuading are meant to be in the audience, yeah. right? Well, I mean, if you're a competitive debater, I guess it's the judges, but still. And the judges are your audience. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. And, um, but the thing is that it puts audiences off too if you are too aggressive to, towards your opponents. So, I mean, there's that aspect of it as yeah, well, yeah. that if you are seeming like you're out for the blood of your opponent yeah. as opposed to having a reasonable discussion, Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. then that reduces your persuasiveness. And in, yeah. and in the Pakistani circuit, at mm -hmm. least to my, in my experience, a couple of other unsavory uh, elements of the circuit mm -hmm. came to the fore when things became personal. So you mentioned the gender disparity. Mm -hmm. There was a, a very visible income disparity. And then oh. people, and then you would see people insinuate uh, yes. arguments or responses, making fun of oh, people's dear. accents or yeah. how they yeah, couldn't yeah. finish eight minutes of speaking in English. And that became beyond just crushing their argument, just about <laughs> defeating yeah, just, the person. Just, just no, I mean, that's it's just not unacceptable. Right? Yeah, it's absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's really yeah. not about camaraderie and, and sort of doing a healthy activity together. And that's just, that's just me. Right. I mean, if at the end of the debate, you can't genuinely walk over and shake hands yes. with your opponent, right? I mean, generally, this is what teams do. Right, yeah. But sometimes it's quite clear that it's a real effort. Right. It shouldn't be an effort, ever. Yeah, yeah, it should never yeah. be an effort to go and shake the hand yeah, of your Yeah, just to be opponent. a good sport about it. Because right. in a way, it is a sport. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah, it could be. Okay, we're just going to take a very short break, and we'll be back with some interesting stories and fun stories about being on the debating circuit. So don't go away. Hi, 
right, welcome back to the coffee table. We're hoping to get to some fun stuff, and I've got, you know, the house has got the debaters thinking really hard about anecdotes. Give you some time. <laughs> so, Ali, tell me, um, what do you, as a debater, and as, of course, somebody who's, you know, been, you know, in that debating mindset for a, a long time, do you think that social media has a sort of contributed to the level of debate that we have now? these days, especially with younger people who might be sort of doing parliamentary thing, debates or learning how to do it. But then there's also the internet. And what people do on the internet almost all the time is argue with each other. Like, do you think that's diluting the, the academic experience? Yes, most certainly. I think <laughs> yeah. all of the negative elements we mentioned about debate are, if anything, yeah. amplified on, uh -huh. on social media. The, the toxicity about elitism or, or mm. sexism or racism, mm. all sorts of other unsavory elements come to the fore because you get to have the same discourse or yeah. something like the same discourse, right. but beyond, beyond anonymity if you want that. So it gives you more freedom mm. to, to express yourselves in these awful ways. Yeah. Uh, so I personally am not a big fan of social media. Right. Um, and I, all of the discourse I've seen, it's limited by... Uh, it's limited by the amount of characters you can use. Right? Right. It's limited by a screen, and there's never a discourse. And there's there's no accountability, and there's no responsibility necessarily Absolutely. for your opinions, as opposed to an actual debate where you're standing there and you have to defend what you're saying to an audience. That's been really interesting for me as president of the organization, mm. um, because it's very different when you're arguing with someone as an individual. And so, you know, random person who has a complaint hmm. can say what they want. Right. Right. I have to respond on social media as the president of the Debating Society of Pakistan, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter that I want to like go into debater sledgehammer mode. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> That's a thing. That is very much a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I know it. <laughs> I but. I don't have that luxury. Yeah. And so it's interesting how social media is really asymmetric in that mm. way because you don't have the freedom to argue when you are in a position where your words will be held against you, right? I mean, oh. the other person doesn't have that issue. And so they can say what they want oh, without so, any so the, accountability. The, the ethics of being a debater in, can also be, hold you back a little bit. Well, the, yeah, and it's not about being a debater as much as being an official for yes. an organization uh, yes. that cares about how mm. the debate is, is perceived. how the organization is perceived and how debate as an activity is perceived. So it's, it's both of those things. Um, we were talking about why so many kids debate. And one of the things yes. is that parents think of debate almost as academic. And so yes, because they, you're studying for it. Huh, you're reading The Economist. I'm sure your mom would have been very happy with you mm. reading oh, The Economist. Oh, yeah, she used to brag about they were it. Like, all Look, I've written politics. Ah, and being a debater yeah. has been you know, a prestigious thing for oh, yeah. hundreds of years. Yes. I mean, it's not a, it's, it's not a recent phenomenon. No. In different societies, it's not just yeah. limited to right, right. Absolutely. all over the world. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, for better or worse, Ted Cruz as a champion debater. He was, he was a president oh, of my debating society. Oh, I'm so sorry. <gasps> oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but, but the thing is that um, one of the things that's changed with social media is also how much kids are interacting with each other outside of the school space. Ah. So even kids in Lahore who are going for all intents and purposes to single sex schools mm -hmm. are no longer in a single sex social environment oh, because yes. so much of mm. their social environment is online. Yeah. Um, so, and that's interesting in that the toxicity that we're talking about yeah. because they're still being trained in real space and meat space as they call it mm -hmm. um, in, in single sex environments, yeah. they really have very little finesse um, or understanding of the the real impacts of the conversation ah. that they're having online. So yeah. it, it can be a really odd kind of space. And, and, the, and the way social media is structured, most of social mm -hmm. media is that you try to get some sort of validation in terms of upvotes or likes yeah. or retweets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you go for sound bites or things that... The sensational. The sensational yeah. thing. Or you could be like, you know, sledgehammer vicious because people are going to sort of... It, it could go viral it and go, you'd just yeah, be exactly. like, yeah, I did that. Yeah. Which can be quite scary and, and, and vicious at 
the same time. Or if you wanted to be more vicious than that, you could just create an account that's yeah. divorced from your real identity mm -hmm. and nobody could find out who's saying all these things, but the words right, still right. hurt and the words can still have yeah. menacing effects. So. Mm -hmm. That's, I remember back in the day, um, I used to be res a resource person for a debate team. <laughs> and we used to have to like ha carry around a lot of like material. But now you can just Google things. Do you think that that's improved the quality of debate? No. Did you Google stuff for research? Because you know, you're younger. I did, but I think um, what that made us, so the effect that it had on us, it made us lazy. Oh. Because it gave us the impression mm. that we could just build cases almost out of thin air. And the internet is not necessarily a reliable place. Yeah, there's to so much information get and it's such facts. a... That's something actually that we are having to work on, which ah. is to help kids develop the skills to discern reliable from unreliable sources. Yeah. Like that's an important one, right? Yeah. Or to... Um, Coaches generally are complaining that mm -hmm. kids don't have as much of an attention span for reading anymore. Mm. And so it's, you know, we had a lot fewer materials at our yeah. disposal when yeah. I was a debater. I mean, mm. you know, you could go to the British Council Library. Uh, you could go to the American Center Library. If you were fortunate enough to have an educational institution that had a library, then you and, a use, and a decent that library that just didn't have like black beauty. And yeah, yeah. Then, then you could Robinson. use that. But those were, and maybe you had friends whose parents had good collections or things like that. So I mean, and but you were limited to print resources but and the print resources, resources that were available yeah, in Lahore. Yeah. But what that meant was that you then had more time to kind of live with those resources. Mm. Um, and so the cases you built. I feel like we had a deeper understanding of the issues that we were oh, arguing. Right. And it surprises me when I see sometimes how superficial uh, kids can be in the way they present arguments. Mm -hmm. How is it not obvious to you that this doesn't fit with everything else that you've just said? Yeah, that there's no sort of logical coherence to it. Right, so, but mm. because, and I think this is where it's a real negative of the internet, mm. where because, and especially social media, where when kids reading is coming basically from what people are suggesting to them in their yes. feeds, right? Yes. And I mean, I'm a teacher. Right, and so my students uh, and I, it was a real revelation for me to discover that their world is so different from mine because oh. what their news feeds throw up for yeah. them yeah. is very different. Like, I mean, they, I, I didn't know, they were talking about one of the Kardashians uh -huh. and I had no idea what she looks like. Okay, oh, I, mean, I, but you I know, know who a Kardashian yeah, was. Absolutely, I know oh, who they are. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not that, <laughs> that old. <laughs> not that much of a fogey. But I don't tend to watch a lot of TV. And you could, they're like, in your defense, there are many Kardashians. Do you know who? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Who? I, was, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, I was born in that, right in the middle of that Venn diagram. Right. Where the internet was, was available, so we could have access to yeah, a lot more yeah. material, but we were still used to reading. Right. Yeah. So we because, got the and best also of because both like, worlds. you know, dial up modem internet. For the most part, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you didn't know who the Kardashian was. I I, I didn't yeah. I had never seen a picture. Okay. Right? And so I yeah, was just like, well, I wouldn't know what they what that person looks like. Yeah. One of the keys. And and yeah. it was like how how does she not show up on your f uh, no I, I can't remember the last time a Kardashian yeah, showed yeah. up on my newsfeed. Because <laughs> your feed tells you what you're already looking at and they just show you more of right. that and, as opposed to a kind of diverse range of, of, yes, of information. Yes. And that bubble effect uh -huh. is very real. Yeah. So it's it's it worries me actually mm. a little bit. I mean, I, I think my feed is a lot more interesting than most teenagers is. I'm sure it is. <laughs> but I, I mean, erudite kind of feed. and interesting to me at yeah. least. Right? I'm sure they would argue otherwise. I, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, but it's certainly okay. I learn a lot more from my news feed than they learn from theirs. Is what I'll, I'll say. Well, I think it depends that's on the nature of learning. Yeah. <laughs> they would argue. No, I'm t totally on, on your side on this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think theirs is much more entertaining. Possibly, yes. Uh, so we're going to sort of coming towards the close <laughs> of our show, and I have these two where you've been debating for yonks now. Tell me, tell me something. Give me something fun. What is like, your favorite memory of debating? What was like a really fantastic moment? Like, come on, you've worn the green blazer. 
I think so when I went, when I went to Worlds in 2012, yeah. um, and I'm not really into the Pakistani Indian rivalry beyond the cricket. Yeah. Game so were you first, second, or third speaker? I was third speaker. So okay. I was I was the designated sledgehammer, yeah. and yeah. Um, <laughs> and so one of our debates was against India, and this ah. is where in the Indian team was has started their climb up the the debating rankings. Oh. And so it was a, it was a very closely fought debate, mm -hmm. um, and it was an intense debate. It was it was and the what crowd was. What was the was emotion? Really, uh, I think it was about the Arab Spring and whether or not oh, interesting. Okay. post Arab yeah. Spring we should allow religious parties to contest elections. Uh -huh. And we were arguing for religious parties, so it was very Ooh. closely fought. This is very suspenseful. I'm really into this story now. <laughs> um, and it was a very tight debate, and we ended up winning. Mm -hmm. And it was a, yeah. and it was the tightest margins you can imagine. Um, and some of those debaters on the Indian team, they were applauding for us. We were applauding for them. It ended up in a very cheesy That's handshake. So nice, we took pictures That's together. Very sweet. That's so nice. Yeah, we had they had their yeah. um, they had their big Indian pins. So I still have my Pakistan team yeah, blazer, man. and one of the pins on it is the Indian team. Oh. I'm still in touch with some of them. Yeah. They all went to college in the U.S. Um, yeah, that was just a fantastic debate. That's yeah. an excellent story. It's so heartwarming, you know, that, that the whole this that we were talking about, you know, the sort of camaraderie outside of a debate, and you're Absolutely. part of a larger community that can, you can still be friends outside. And of, one of the know. things we heard from them, because mm -hmm. one of the members of their team, who was a year below me academically, yeah. um, told me that when he became coach of the Indian team, um, he showed a lot of, he showed the video of that debate as mm -hmm. the Ooh. kind of level you have to expect at world. Right, right. right. That was, that's that was pretty moving. Neat. Yeah, that, that, was, that was pretty great yeah, to hear. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's an excellent story. <laughs> <laughs> can you top it? <laughs> I don't know about topping it. One of my, I mean, I'm remembering from when I was on Pak team, right. which is a long time ago. <laughs> Did you also have a green blazer then? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Those uh, blazers are nice. I don't have Those a blazers are really nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we I still... feel so left out on uh, the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, but, you know, in, in 92, it used to be that there was only basically one venue because the tournament mm -hmm. was still small enough, okay. the world schools, right. that you could have all the debates at the same school. And so everyone would meet for lunch and then you'd ask, hey, how'd you do? And, yeah. uh, you know, if, if you had won, people would say congratulations. If you'd lost, they'd say, oh, too bad. Yeah. And it was just kind of fun. And then we beat England Ooh. in England. Oh, nice. At I think it's a powerhouse of yeah. the In London. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right and where the parliament is. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, at, at the Westminster School. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is a very good story. <laughs> And and it was hilarious because we went back for the meal and mm. just like, who, who were you up against? And we said, England, how'd you do? We went, oh, well done! <laughs> and the whole world was thrilled that we had been oh <laughs> One of those things that unites everybody. Yeah, it was like, yes, the, the Commonwealth <laughs> came together. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Good on you. Uh, you took but the my, my heartwarming story is, yeah. has to do with the Israeli team. Oh. So in 1992, you have mm -hmm. to remember that the peace process yeah. was very a very real thing. Uh, Rabin was still alive, mm -hmm. um, and there was there seemed like a really good chance yeah. that um, the Palestine issue would be resolved. So close. Um, yeah. So the I mean the 93 Accords happened some months later, right? Yeah. And um, so the Israeli team and the Pakistani team were really, became really close friends during this tournament. And okay. I mean, most of us had never interacted with anyone who was Jewish before. Mm -hmm. And it was because obviously the postal service does not go to Israel. No, I imagine so, it wouldn't. Um, so we would actually send letters ah. to each other. So, um, either connections in Switzerland or connections in the United States. And so we were pen friends oh, wow. for years. And I mean, through a sort of fairly complex path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I mean, it took effort to maintain yeah, yeah. that. And it was very meaningful in the sense that it was, it was a hopeful time. I mean, we had mm. real, and it wasn't that we were shying away from the difficult conversation of, well, yeah, you're kind of happen? on mm. Palestinian territory. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's wrong, it's wrong. Yeah, mm. but, but we were able to have those conversations. Ah. 
it was really fantastic that's, in that way. That's uh, so wonderful. And I think that's really the um, whole point, isn't it, at the end of the day, of debate, so being in to that To be able to disagree scene. civilly. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's something that we, it, it would do well for all of us to learn a little bit of. And with that, on that note, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to have both of you us. green blazers on set. Maybe we should have worn our blazers. Oh, to maybe set next time we'll do that. And then I'll sort of have to get Russell up a green outfit and just be like, I'm color coordinated. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for watching. And we will see you next time. Oh, if you are watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next episode. Bye.